Good morning, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. Yes, we're in a recession. Yes, inflation is out of control. We all know it. 9%? Mm, I don't think so. I don't think when a dozen eggs goes from, oh, I don't know, a dollar to 350, I don't think that's 9% inflation. I mean, forgive me if I don't understand the math, but I don't think that's 9%. Everybody's getting hit hard, except the rich who are always fine and who cares about them. The middle class is getting squeezed. The working class is getting squeezed. The poor are always getting squeezed. For those of you who are new to saving money, who are saying, oh, 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 this, this is bad. This is bad and getting worse. What am I gonna do? I, I, how am I gonna afford to live? How am I gonna pay my mortgage? What am I gonna do? All Today, we are going to discuss the five most important principles to saving money and staying afloat in these very, very, very difficult financial times. I've also got one bonus principle for you. I'm gonna save it to the end because some people aren't gonna wanna hear it. And that's why I'm gonna save it to the end because if I did it first, you might just say, screw that and turn off and then not hear the beautiful wisdom of the other five, okay? So here we go, number one, you better figure out fast your wants versus your needs. Not a revolutionary concept, if you haven't heard it before, well, you're hearing it now. Too many of us really confuse the two and really think that some of those wants are needs. I need a new phone, I need new shoes, I need a new car every three years, I need a Lexus. I need this, I need that. No, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. You don't need it, okay? You need air to breathe. You need water. You need shelter. You need food. You might need coffee. I'm not gonna argue with that one. I feel like coffee's a need. You know, like medicine. You need, if you need medicine to live, you need it. And coffee is medicine. But you don't need Starbucks coffee. No, you freaking don't. And by the way, I don't care if you like it because it's disgusting. It's way too strong. It's way too acidic. Get over it and make your coffee at home. You can get a coffee maker. I'm not saying you have to go out and get like a $300 espresso machine or whatever they cost. I would have no idea. You can get a $20 Mr. Coffee. You can probably get it for less at a thrift store. You need exercise. Sure, you need exercise to be healthy and yes. But you don't need to belong to a gym. No, you do not. No, you do not. Cancel that gym membership. Stop wasting money. Even if you're the kind of person who shows up at the gym. No. Oh, jeez. Go for a walk. Go for a jog. Lift some weights. Jog holding a can of soup in each hand. Learn to do push-ups. Or you probably already know how to do push-ups if you go to a gym. But do push-ups. Do pull-ups. Do yoga at home with a video. You don't need to go to a gym. That's a huge expense you can get rid of right now. You need to eat. You do not need to eat in a restaurant. I don't care if you like to eat out. I don't care if you're used to eating out. You do not need takeout. I know you're busy. Hey, if you can afford it and you don't need to save the money, not my business. Waste it, waste your money however you want. But if things are tight, oh my gosh. Inflation's bad enough as it is just trying to buy groceries. Don't waste your money with restaurants. Don't waste your money with like Uber Eats or whatever these delivery services are. That's insane. That's just plain stupid. You don't know how to cook? You freaking learn how to cook. Come on. Come the heck on. Oh my gosh. My, my nine-year-olds can cook. I'm not saying they could, you know, cook up a whole Thanksgiving dinner, but if push came to shove, they know how to make ramen. They know how to make eggs. They know how to make tea. They know how to make a sandwich. They can pour a bowl of cereal. They can toast a bagel. It, it, it's, not, it's not that hard. And if your food budget is, is really just squeezed, like squeezed to the limit, which yeah, it probably is. Oh my gosh, ditch the foods you want and, and focus on the foods you need. You want soda and chips, you don't need them. You know how I feel about soda. Oh, soda, soda. No, N no, 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 no. 
How many times do I have to say How many times do I have to say it? No. <laughs> no. You've got to take your limited grocery budget and focus on nutrition. Soda isn't going to give you any nutrition. It's going to compromise your health big time. Why is there a helicopter going over my house right now? I think you're understanding the principle here. Focus on meeting your absolute needs. Your wants are luxury items and we are done with luxury items right now. Sorry, but we are. Number two, if you don't have the money for it, don't buy it. YouTube's full of videos on how to fix things. Learn how to fix things. You gotta make, do, and mend, okay? Very important principle. You've heard it before. It's, 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 how, it's how Britain survived World War II, right? Make, do, and mend. Learn to make do with what you have. We're such a, like a greedy, consumer-based society in the West. Oh, we have to have more, we have to have more, we have to more. It has to be more, it has to be bigger. More, more, more. Keep the economy going, it's gotta grow. We must have more. Make more, buy more, make more, buy more. Deal with what you have, accept what you've got. With your, with your basic items that you are likely to just say, oh, it's broken, it's torn, throw it out, get a new one. No, uh, no one, no one, no. It, it, oh my gosh. You can learn to fix things, right? I mean, if other people figured out how to fix things and put a YouTube video up about it, you, you can figure it out too, okay? You're just as smart as they are. You can figure that out too. You don't have any tools? Go to a yard sale, go to a boot sale, get, get some tools. Okay, I remember when I used to work in an office sewing buttons on for other people. Like, oh, I lost a button, can you sew it on for me? And I don't know if, if people just asked me to do that because they knew I would do it for them and could do it for them. Maybe they could do it too and they're like, I don't feel like it, Amy will do it for us. Let's just, just let her sew the buttons on. Or they just literally don't know how to sew. But if you can get the thread through the eye of the needle, which can be tricky, but once, once you got that in there, it's, it's not that hard to figure out how to sew something by hand, how to mend a little tear. Just be satisfied with what you have. And if it needs to be fixed, try to fix it. Don't just throw things out and run off to the store to get something new. Hey, and so, sometimes if something breaks, you might not be able to fix it. There are a lot of things you can learn to live without, right? Your TV breaks, you don't have to go out and buy a brand new flat screen TV. You really, really, really don't. You've got to learn to be okay with a simpler life where you might go without things and you'll find that you adjust really quickly. People adjust. You might not want to adjust, but you will adjust. If you embrace the change rather than fight it, you'll adjust faster. But you make do with what you have, you fix what you can, Learn to live without certain things. Number three, learn to make your own fun. I think people have really forgotten how to do this. Your great grandmother knew how to do this. Like we are so, we're so used to just being fed entertainment constantly. And entertainment and recreation are, are great. And I think they are necessities. I mean, it's part of the human psyche to need to, you know, blow off steam and have fun and celebrate and laugh and, and play and have fun. And did I say have fun? Why? Why? So yes, that's all important, but it doesn't have to be, um, it doesn't have to be a, oh my God, my cat is so adorable, Lucy. It doesn't have to be a giant financial outlay. Some hobbies are very expensive. Uh, believe you me, I know. Golf. Yeah, I'd love to play golf. I'd love to go off with Frugal Daddy and the kids and play a whatever. I was going to say a half round of golf. I don't even think that's what you call it. Nine holes, whatever. Three holes, one hole of golf. It could probably take me all day to get the ball into the first hole. That's fine. But golf's expensive. A lot of things are just to, oh my God, going to a movie. I, 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 I remember, I remember back in the day. I remember when movies went up to $7 in New Jersey, and this was a long time ago, and they went up to $9 in New York City. And I thought, that's in 
insane to pay nine dollars for a movie who oh, oh no 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 oh god no just no moms and dads i know it's very hard to have to tell your kids this thing you want to do this traveling sports thing you want to do we can't afford it i'm sorry i mean those things are expensive you know that if your kid does like traveling soccer or traveling i don't even know what but whatever that stuff's expensive and i know it's very hard to tell your kids we can't do that anymore so i mean personally what i suggest as an adult as a grown-up you give up your own stuff first it's not like oh i'm gonna keep doing my thing but i can't afford for you to do your thing i mean that's just how i think like you give up yourself stuff first to, to try to provide for your kids if you just can't afford it you can't afford it if you can't afford to give your kids skating lessons and swimming lessons and gymnastic lessons and and karate lessons like i'm sorry then i mean maybe next year it's a mindset your mindset has to change rather than throwing money at an issue you got to get creative and make your own fun and i think m my kids are as guilty or our family is as guilty of it as as some people not everybody but some people whereas these kids like they want to be entertained and they just expect things to just be fun all the time and mom's a clown and mom's gonna entertain us and and it's like do you guys know how to play like when i was a kid there i there never my mother never played with me for one thing and i'm not saying that's the best parenting example in the world because i do play with my kids but she never played, she never entertained me. And if I was bored, and I'm the kind of like mean mom who does this too. If the kids are bored, oh, I'll find you something to do. You can pull weeds. Oh, I remember, um, you're bored, Amy, go make every bed in the house. That was fun, that's really fun, that entertained me. Like, don't ever complain of being bored, you're gonna get chores. Go pull weeds, feel free to vacuum, feel free to fold some laundry like you need something to do I'll find you something to do but better if the kids uh, and 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 kids should do chores and kids should pitch in the family is a it's a system and it needs to all work together and everybody's part of the system and everybody can contribute but anyway the point is make your own fun and don't tell me you're bored because I'm gonna have you out in the yard pulling weeds when I was growing up back in the dark ages. Um, my parents never entertained me. They were not really entertaining people. And my father and my grandmother would like play cards and we'd play Yahtzee and do puzzles and things like that at night. But oh, we weren't off doing things all the time. Ugh, doing things the way people are nowadays. They can't stay home. They can't entertain themselves. They can't play. They always have to be out there spending money looking looking for entertainment ah make your own fun oh my gosh make up a game get creative and you don't even have to be that creative because the internet's full of creative things you know do a search free stuff you can do as a family for fun go to the playground play in the sandbox go for a walk have a pretend family olympics with hula hooping as a, an event and and i don't I, what, make your own fun think you can figure that out get off the freaking phones and read a book pet your cat wash your dog that's fun i really would love my kids today to to to, to wash our car for kids that's fun i mean oh my gosh as a kid the idea of getting to wash the car I don't know was that weird i thought that was really fun you just can't sit around waiting for fun to come to you number four one of my favorites make use of available resources this has been my motto for my entire what passes for my adult life make use of available resources and that's going to be different for everybody so sometimes i show things and i say okay this is what i did with this and other people might say well i can't do that because i don't have that like you collected a bunch of pine cones and you're doing this little whatever craft with it and you're making Christmas ornaments and whatever, whatever with your pine cones. But I don't live in a place where there are any pine cones. I can't do that. But you, you have something. I mean, there's something everywhere. I'm very much a scavenger, surprise, surprise, and forager. And I go for walks every day and I, I it, like, 
it, just getting the exercise is good enough, but I really, I want to come home with something every day. Um, if, if it's, if it's just a, a nice smooth river rock, because we live next to the river, we have so many river rocks and we paint them and they are like little garden borders and little rock gardens and just like painting the rocks. It's rocks, rocks by the river. Look, see river rocks. I just hosed them off to get the dirt off so we could paint them. You want to see, you want to see? There we go. The kids and I have been painting rocks to be a little, you know, border around little vegetable beds. The point is, whatever resources are available to you without raping and pillaging the land, make use of available resources. Perhaps it's the local library. Libraries are such an amazing resource. Besides just checking out books or videos and please return them on time so you don't have enormous fees. I, I, this, this, I am so guilty of this one. I have paid library fines over the years like you wouldn't believe, and it kills me to do it. But it's like as soon as I check something out of the library, it's like three months has gone by and I haven't returned it. Like I don't understand how time speeds up as soon as I check something out of the library. Like I don't get that. But our local library system has passes to things. Like you can check out a pass to a museum or to a botanical garden. I mean, you have to get yourself there, sure, and with the price of gas, it depends, you know, how far you have to go, you know, whatever, whatever, but libraries have resources like that. Churches and mosques and synagogues and other places of worship and community centers and things, they, they have all sorts of resources available or or you can always start something like, okay, I'm, I'm part of this church and I want to start a quilting group or a knitting group or just, just something where people come together. I was going to say the ladies come together, but you know what? Men can do the needle crafts too. We come together and we chat and we are, uh, you know, we give each other emotional support. We give each other ideas. We trade coupons. There's an available resource couponing. It's not as great as it used to be, but the coupons are still there. If you're going to buy that item anyway, why not get a few dollars off of it? But, you know, create, create a group. I think there's a lot of, I don't know if the word power is correct, but, you know, this traditional approach in some cultures of usually women getting together and sewing together or cooking together or knitting together, whatever, doing the womanly stuff together and, and talking and being supportive to each other and laughing and joking and, and telling stories and, oh, you know, my kid is going through this. What do I do? Or my husband, blah, blah, blah. check out your county's local, you know, agricultural extension office. See if there's a class you can take or if they um, can provide you with seeds or free mulch or, or compost. Maybe you live near a forest and you can go collect firewood for free. Get out in nature. Get out in nature. There's an available resource for you. Everybody can enjoy nature. If you live in the middle of a city, it might be a little bit harder to find nature, but most cities have parks at least, and get out in the park. In New Jersey for the past few years because of the pandemic, our state parks have all been free. Free admittance to state parks. Do you live near a body of water? Could you go fishing? Just ne never be afraid to ask for some kind of discount. Is there a senior discount? Is there a student discount? You get food stamps. If you get SNAP benefits, you can buy seeds and even if you don't have space to grow a garden, try sprouting on your kitchen counter. Try doing sprouts and microgreens. Very, very nutritious. Get some chia seeds. Get some, what else is really easy to sprout? Um, lentils. Lentils are super easy to sprout. Like any of those dried beans and legumes that you get, you know, your bag of navy beans or peas, dried peas, old dried peas in a bag. Those are seeds. You can sprout those. If you live in a place, obviously, where people throw out, you know, furniture and household items, they put it out with their trash every week. I mean, you know, you know, you know, we pick through all that. We people throw away vacuums a lot. They throw away lamps because they don't know how to fix the cord. And even if that lamp is completely 
broken or it's just the ugliest lamp you ever saw and you're just like i don't i don't really want the lamp people will throw away with their lamps i've seen it so many times a light bulb in screwed in the lamp still a perfectly fine working light bulb and the lamp shade lamp shades are expensive rescue a lamp shade just open your eyes look around see what's available and don't feel any shame about picking up some some kind of trash somewhere that you want to use who cares what other people think? That's a big, oh, that should be the bonus principle. Stop worrying about what other people think. That's your first bonus principle right there. Stop worrying what other people think of you. Unless they're paying your bills, they can keep their mouths shut. I mean, you could say that to me. Unless you're paying my bills, Amy, keep your damn mouth shut. But I'm trying to help you figure out how to keep paying your bills. Scrap metal. There's another available resource. Some people are into collecting scrap metal. Good for them. You have a friend who collects scrap metal and frugal daddy whenever he finds scrap metal he'll save it for him now scrap metal i mean you have to collect quite a bit to have it add up but if you do collect quite a bit and add it up and you're just taking it from other people's trash like that's a great available resource number five waste nothing learn not to waste before you throw something away think to yourself can i use this for something else can i save this without my home you know being overwhelmed by crap that i'm saving like you you don't want to cross the line whatever the line is for you into hoarding junk you don't need saving things you do need good hoarding crap you don't need probably not so good but hey it's up to you i'm not gonna tell you not to be a hoarder hoard what you want i mean as long as you didn't turn your house into a fire trap and it's, it's not a safety hazard. Keep what you want. You don't have to be a minimalist. You don't have to get rid of all your stuff. Though, one of the available resources to you, back to number four, might be your own stuff in terms of what do you have that you don't use that you could sell. You don't have to have a yard sale. Sell it on Facebook Marketplace. Sell it on eBay. Da -da -da -da, whatever. Like the Native American tribes with the buffalo. They waste nothing. Everything gets turned into something. It, it can't be easy to hunt a buffalo and kill it. After going through all that effort, you're not just going to be like, oh, well, we'll have some buffalo steaks and just throw all the other crap in the crap pile, our crap pile over there in the corner. No, 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 no. You make use of, of everything as best you can, as best you know how. Again, within the limits of, I don't want to be a hoarder, da, 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 da. Hoarders get such a bad name because of those TV shows. It's really... Oh my gosh. Save one thing and people are going to be like, oh, you're such a hoarder. And it's like, you know what? Keep your little Jack Weasel opinion to yourself on that one. You keep what you need to keep. But the point is don't waste stuff. Okay, so what should I not waste? Eggshells. Eggshells go in the garden. Compost all of your food scraps if you can. I mean, I know, I know if you're in an apartment, you might not be able to compost. They do have those fancy little countertop compost machines now that cost, what, three or $400? Don't buy one of those. It'd be cool to have one, but don't, don't, don't be jumping on the latest technology. Compost if you can, if you can, 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 right? If you get a great deal, here's making use of an available resource. If there's a great sale, I know we just jumped back, but if there's a great sale, like if there ever is a great sale again on anything at the grocery store or at a farmer's market, let's say you can just, I don't know, peaches are on sale for 40 cents a pound. Oh, God, do I ever wish. And you know how to can things, and I don't need to tell canners this, but you buy a ton of this stuff and can it up. Save it for when peaches are not gonna be on sale. Before you waste something and throw something away, see if somebody else needs it or donate it. I'm gonna tell you something Frugal Daddy did before I met him that just made me wanna like, oh, crush his little head. He threw away suits his men's suits you know the jacket and trousers that match a suit nice suits why did he throw them away because they were out of fashion and i said to him it didn't occur to you to donate them who would want them they were out of style they were out of style were they so some poor person who has no suit to wear, but would like a suit because they're trying to better their lives and get a better job and present better when they go for a, a job interview, whether it's 
you know, whatever kind of job it is, whatever. And they want to wear a suit, but they can't afford a suit. So they go to a thrift store and look for a suit, but they can't find one because nobody donated one because it's not fashionable. Like they give a crap if it, who, like who cares? It's a man's suit. Really? Really? Are we on the level of really giving a crap what you're, I mean, I'm not saying, well, whatever, maybe I am saying, go back to the big wide lapels of the 70s. Sure, go ahead and wear your baby blue polyester leisure suit. Like, who cares? I, just, ugh, that one really got me, but that was from before I knew him. Mm, we're not throwing away suits now. Before you throw something away, think about it. So to recap, one, get a grip on wants versus needs. Two, make do and mend, be satisfied with what you've got and learn to go without. It's not gonna kill you. Three, make your own fun. Four, make use of available resources. Five, waste nothing. And the bonus that I had, the number six, get over yourselves. You're not special. I know your mom told you you were special, especially if you're male. Your mama told you you were special, I bet. Okay, you're not special. Or you are special, we're all special. Like if everybody's special, then nobody's special. I mean, we're all the same, right? It, it, nobody deserves anything in my book. I know a lot of people love to say like, I deserve, nah, 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 nah. I deserve it, I deserve it, I deserve it. I work hard, I deserve it. Uh, okay, you deserve it, but if you don't have the money for it and you're struggling to keep up with inflation and you're trying to pay your mortgage and you're a little bit concerned about how you're gonna pay for heat this winter, um, just get over yourself. Like, you deserve air, you deserve water, you deserve love, because you're worthy of it. But, you know, other than that, I'm sorry if it sounds mean, but just, you know, you gotta quit being spoiled brats. I know so many people who are so spoiled, and the idea of going without anything that they're used to having, oh my God, what a bunch of babies. You're not gonna make it in this brave new world. You're not gonna make it in this economy, this recession that might become another Great Depression. I mean, whether it becomes a Great Depression for everybody, I don't know. I'm already in my own Great Depression, I can tell you that. Like, it's the Great Depression for me. You, you're not gonna survive if you think that you're so special and you deserve things and things are just gonna come your way and you don't need to make adjustments and you don't need to learn how to give up things and just get over yourself. That's all I'm saying. For people who are not over themselves yet, just, I'm saying this with my kindest, most loving, caring heart. Get over yourself. These are just the basic principles of frugal living, okay? Just basic, basic. Apply it to your life as you can. So, frugal friends, thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful to anybody who is sort of new to this frugal living and needs to learn how to cut back and adjust and adjust quickly because of the way prices are. Um, I, I hope it helps. I hope these principles help and guide you and just give you a little more to think about, little sort of little, little basics to start and, you know, keep your chin up. Don't get bogged down in watching the news and all the doomsday shows that I watch. There's some great comedy on YouTube, let me tell you. And if you need to pick me up, just find a British comedian. I am I'm not saying anything against the American comedians. I just personally like the British comedians. So look at Sarah Milliken. Look at Ramesh. Oh gosh, I can't say his last name. Ramesh Rangam Ranganathan? Ranganathan? It will cheer you up, okay? Laughter is the best medicine. Reader's Digest was correct. Laughter is the best medicine. And there you go. There's another free tip for you for your overall life enjoyment and mental health. You are all savings warriors now and together we will weather this storm, whether it be an ongoing recession or another depression, or it might just be a dip, a dip along the road. But a dip for some people might be a lifelong trench for others. Who knows? I mean, everybody's circumstances are different and when you just, you, you gotta just do the best you can given where you are in life. So all that being said, I wish you well. I look forward to reading your comments. I hope you will feel free to subscribe and share this video and stay tuned for more dumpster diving. Thumbs up to you. You can do it. You will do it. What are we, what are we looking at? Oh.